17 years in the making, and we finally get our sequel to Bad Boys 1 and 2. Not much more to say on that than that. What's going on guys, this is Joshua aka Future Film Maker doing Authorized Zero Reviews where we talk movies, TV shows, and music, and I am giving you guys my review for the third movie in the Bad Boys franchise, and that is Bad Boys for Life. We'll start Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, Vanessa Hudgens, Charles Milton, Kate Ducastillo, Paolo Nunez, and Joe Pantoliano, and is now directed by Michael Bay. This time is directed by Adi L. Arby and Bailali Fala. And in Bad Boys for Life, it takes place 17 years after the second film, and the once inseparable duo of Marcus Burnett and Mike Lowry, they are coming apart as Burnett, who is aging, has become a police inspector while Lowry is suffering a midlife crisis, and they are assigned to head up AMO, which is a young guns group of millennium cops with whom he has nothing in common with, or in the words of Mike Lowry, a high school musical boy band with guns. Both of them reunite once again when a fierce cartel mob boss, whose brother they defeated years earlier, makes a retaliation effort on Mike just as he and Marcus are about to officially retire. So they have to go get back into the game, ride together, die together, and they work with Ammo to take down the, the drug lord, his brother who tried to kill him, who tried to kill Mike. Before I go into my thoughts on Bad Boys 3, what are you, I want to see what you guys have to say in the comment section down below. Be sure to follow all my social media links to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Stardust, Letterboxd. Also, if you want to donate money, you can feel free to donate money in, to my time. Just, mess, just message me through, G, through email and I will give you my give you my route number and such such. Now, Bad Boys for Life. This was one of my most anticipated films of 2020, and I love the first two Bad Boys movies. They're fun. They're, they don't have to try and be the greatest movies in the world, but they're fun. Entertaining action films with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence doing it is what they do. And when they announced the third movie, is taken to the whole decades, the 2000s and the 2010s for this movie to get made. So basically, you take that, it's been 17 years to, for this movie to see the live day. And then when they finally announced that it was coming out, initially it was supposed to come out in 2019, but it got pushed back to January of 2020. And I was excited. At the same time, considering the fact that it, w it is January, it is I was a little, a little nervous, but I still have my, my hopes up because from the trailers it looked good. It it felt like going back to another fun movie with Marcus Burnett and my glory, which is always fun to see, and is all and want to see how this will turn out. So I saw this a day or early before the movie actually came out. I'm gonna tell you right now, Bad Boys for Life is my second favorite in the Bad Boys series. Yep, I'm not stressing when I say that because the Bad Boys for Life, this is fun. This is a good movie, and this is coming from a guy who loves first first two movies so obviously I was gonna like this one. There is a lot of good thing, things to say about Bad Boys for Life. For one, I will say the chemistry between Will Smith and Martin Lawrence as Detective Michael Lowry and Marcus Burnett. It feels like you, you've never left these two characters after waiting 17 years since the second movie. It feels like you never left them. They still have the so 
have that ban the fun banter back and forth with each other that you expect to see in the Bad Boys movie. And that was one thing I was a little concerned with as far as chemistry. Was chemistry still be there? Because it's been it's been 17 years since seven movie, but the chemistry is still there between Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. There's a lot of moments with Martin Lawrence, with especially one moment in the movie where he he's like, where he's basically praying to God, and where he says no more violence. I won't say where that scene takes place in, unless you've seen the movie. I'm gonna leave that to your own interpretation. But Martin Lawrence, he's still pretty fun funny. It's good. It's good to see Martin Lawrence back in the movie again after. Big Mama's House 3 because we haven't seen him since Big Mama House 3. Will Smith all, always brings his A game, he always has his fun charisma and even in the, even in the movies that he's not, that, that are not very good like After Earth, Collateral Beauty and even Gemini Man which I didn't even hate from last year he, he he's always he's always a good good actor to watch and I love Will Smith and Martin Lawrence as his two characters. And also say that the action scenes in this movie, the way the action scenes are shot by these two directors, this is their first directorial effort. And I gotta say these two directors I do wanna see what they do next. Adi L R B and Belali Fala. And plus, they're in talks to do a movie for Marvel, so I can't wait to see what they do there. But the way the action scenes are shot, you can tell it still has the Michael Bay, is Michael Bay rhythms from the first two, while the directors try to bring their own individual style. And it, the action scenes, they do get over the top, they do get crazy, but that you got that's what you expect going into a bad boys movie. Is the action to be insane? And there were time, there were times where I felt like the action was just so over the top. I just couldn't, couldn't stop smiling with the action because that's what you want. See an action movie, especially a buddy cop action comedy. And I will say the humor is the humor works to its full advantage. The comedy works to its full advantage. There's not a, a joke in the movie that didn't work. All the jokes made me laugh a lot. There was, especially the one scene in the trailer where the, I get the group of Emma, they're trying to sing the Bad Boy song and Will and Martin just have to call them out on that saying they, they mess up. Which is funny, even though it's funny in the trailers, it's even more funny when you watch it in the movie. Bad Boy. Hey. What she gonna do? What she gonna do when we come in? Hey, 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 uh uh. No, no, never. Y'all will never do that again. Yeah, and you fucking up the lyrics, which take a long time to learn. Speaking of the ammo team, I do want to talk about them. So, in this ammo team, we do have Vanessa Hudgens, is Kelly, Charles Milton, and you have. Alexander Ludwig and Alexander Ludwig is a pretty good actor. These are three great actors. I do like Charles Milton. I've seen him in Riverdale. And Alexander Ludwig, he got he got buffed up for this part, so he has his own little action scene towards the end of the movie, which I won't spoil. And Vanessa Hudgens, this is the best I've seen of Vanessa Hudgens since well since the last movie i saw her in which was spring breakers so i will say they all did really great vanessa hudgens she had her little moments of humor they all have their moments of humor in this entire movie also i did forget to mention in this ammo team we do have paola nunez who is the ex-girlfriend of mike named Rita and she's the head of AMO so apparently they had a thing going on but it didn't really work out and I really loved this chick she was hot she was sexy she was, she held her own she wasn't a a, a female character 
to over, just there to overshadow Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. She had her action scenes, she had her badass moments, and she worked pretty well with the rest of the cast. She's a mix of Courtney Cox, um, Carrie Ann Moss, and Rosa Salazar from Melita Bauer Angel. And you take all of that and you make it into one. And I really like that. Joe Pantoliano is Captain Howard. I, he was pretty funny if he's playing the your usual angry cop. He still was funny. He's not in the movie very much and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give that away because there is something that does happen and I do want you to watch the movie for yourself without me having to tell you what happened. Now our two vil our, our villains in the movie we have Jacob Scipio as Armando Ta Tapio who is the main antagonist and he is the brother of Johnny Tapio from Bad Boys 2. And Kate Del Castillo as Isabel, who Mike has a history with, which I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give that away. I want to keep it spoiler free as possible, even though the movie's been out for more than than, than, a, than a week now. I just, I just want to keep it spoiler free. But I will say that the, these two, they're they're, they're pretty good villains. They're pretty good villains. They're not the greatest villains, but again, you don't watch bad boys movies for the villains. You watch it to see Will Smith and Martin Lawrence do what they do. You also have Teresa Randall back. You also have the daughter character of Marcus and Reggie from the second movie. And you also have DJ Khaled. So the cast is well done. From a cinematography standpoint, I will say the cinematography is well done. This is a beautiful movie to look at as far as cinematography in the, in the way of its action scenes and the way of its, its look and the way of its camera angles. You can tell the director in cinematography does for, did a really good job as far as the, the locations and the production design. And, and, and this movie is fast paced too, it's only is mercifully shorter than Bad Boys 2. Is this two hours and four minutes. It gets you straight in, get you straight out. Even though I like Bad Boys 2, one of my main problems with Bad Boys 2 is that it was two hours and twenty-seven minutes too long and it felt like it was a little too much going on. But I still have fun with Bad Boys 2. And I will say the music is really good by Lauren Balfe. Is the, the score in this movie is really well done. I do like the way the music is composed. I do like the soundtrack choices for, as well. And the way the, they reintroduced the Bad Boys theme from the first movie by Mark Mancina is really well done. With the violin orchestra and the little choir they added in for this my only sort of my only sort of gripe was that there were just not a lot but there was only a few moments where I'm like okay really that didn't need to be be there and there were a couple, and there were just a few moments of explanatory that that did take, that did slow down, but it was good. It it was good characterization for the most part. So I'm not really going to complain too much into it. And I do like the fact that they don't retcon the second movie. They do mention what happened with Mike and Sid, which obviously that didn't work out. And I, they, so it's nice that they kept continuity with the, this first movie and the second movie. So that was very nice of them to do. And now this movie's making money. This, there, there will, it looks like the way this movie ends, they are pretty much setting up for a fourth one. So I'd be down for it. Is I'm pretty sure since in the way of Mission Impossible and Fast and Furious where Mission Impossible goes protocol and Fast Five just reinvented both of those franchises this is gonna do the same thing and we can get more 
with Bad Boys movies because I do want to see more of Mike and Marcus. Because you can't, you can't go along with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence doing what they do. Now before I give you my final thoughts on Bad Boys for Life, be sure to tell me in the comment section down below what did you think of the film. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you think it's a guilty pleasure? Do you think it's somewhere in the middle? Be sure to follow all my social media links are in the description box down below. And if you want to donate any money, you you can do so. So which time? Which time? And uh, and uh, you can message me probably through email, and I will get this, and you you'll be able to send money through through time. All in all, Bad Boys for Life, this is the best movie of January 2020. Second movie would be The Gentleman because Bad Boys for Life is a third installment, a long awaited sequel that works thanks to Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. The action is still very fun. It goes in its own direction while still keeping continuity with the, the first two Bad Boys movies. and it the and it and is not afraid to go go full full out fledged when it comes to his action scenes as well as his twists and turns because there are some pretty twists and turns at when you do watch the movie. If you are a fan of the first of the first two bad boys and movies, I think you'll enjoy this one. If you're not a bad boys fan or if you're not into action movies like this, I don't think this is gonna be your thing. But I would still say give it at least one or one watch. It may, it may end up surprising you. So with all that being said, on my rating system, I'm going to give Bad Boys for Life an epitastic. So Bad Boys for Life, tell me in the comments what you think. All my social media links are in the description box down below. Below, be sure to use the hashtag Future Filmmaker 3940 reviews. You guys keep it cool. Enjoying the epitaph. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong.